Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective. Jordan's subjective perspective. <laughs> cool. We're going. We are good. We're going with the. Hey, pull it up a little bit closer to your mouth. Okay, there we go. We're uh, we're going with the guy who hooks me up with my seventh grade girlfriend. My first girlfriend ever. My first kiss, I believe, as well. Wait, who was that? Maddie Wagner. Oh, no, shit, that's right. Yeah. That's right. It was because of me that you met her. Yeah. Oh, dude, I forgot about that. Your next door neighbor. She was. My first kiss. And I used, I actually, I would say her number. I Like, I have her number memorized to this day. You still have it memorized? Yeah. Okay. Because nice. <laughs> I used to, I used to call her. This hat is so hot. I mean, I, I, I'm going to commit to it, but it's so hot. It's very uncomfortable to wear this. I'm going to tie this up on the top. But yeah, you but know, you put it on. You have to keep it on the exactly, entire time. Exactly. Brendan gets it. Uh, But no, no, I think it, I think she was my first kiss. Nice. And that's because of you. You made that happen. Hey, man, you're welcome. Well, thank you. You're welcome. I'm like that dude from Hitch. I just, like, set up relationships. <laughs> Will, Will Smith and his prime. Yeah, I'm the white Will Smith. There you go. Bitch. So, I was thinking about it, and this is just I'll, this is how I want to start this podcast. If I was a pat, like I just want to start it with a, a statement. Okay. And we'll go from here. All right, Whatever happens, it happens. All right, go for it. If I was a pastor, I would make the people call me daddy instead of father. <laughs> See, I like that. I like that. <laughs> That's probably going to go well with the female crowd, I'm pretty sure. I'd say so. Probably so. Especially the younger female crowd. Younger yeah. boys, too. Yeah, definitely the younger boys. It'll be like, it'll be easy transition to hear the for the younger boys to hear that. <laughs> so, whenever you come to confession, nine years or younger, little boy, just call me daddy. <laughs> call me daddy. All right, Sonny. Confess your sins to daddy. Daddy won't judge. Daddy doesn't care. Daddy loves all. <laughs> That's hilarious. No, honestly, I feel like, um, like, could you imagine what it would be like if pastors were called daddy instead of father? Like, it's kind of weird that we call them father to start with. But if we call them daddy, like, everybody would have a problem with that. I know. I've never understood why we call pastors father because isn't father supposed to mean God? Like, we call God father, people who believe in God. Usually it's, you know, in Christian faith, that's what they call God father. But pastor, no, he's, like, not God. So why do we refer to him as father? Doesn't doesn't really make much sense to me. That's a good point. We're, like, putting him equal to God. Yeah, in a sense, pretty much. I've never thought about it that way. I've yeah, never thought about weird. it that way. Wait, like, what is the reasoning for calling them father? I don't know. I don't know where that originated from. Uh huh. But do you think? Because do you think it originated from God the Father? Because like I people think are so. people see pastors as like holy people, right? Exactly. And that might be a scheme to you know get money from people. Is like, hey, they're we're comparing ourselves to God. So you know, you trust God, you would give your money to God, right? So. Hence, father, um, your father, it's a familiar, you know, familiar sounding word, very trusting word. You're going to trust somebody who, refer, who you refer to as father, so you're probably more likely to give that person money. Maybe that's where it comes from. I don't know. Because, you know, that pastor, he needs his, uh, he needs his nice Mercedes, but he, can't, he needs that Mercedes somehow. He can't just make that Mercedes come out of nowhere. He needs the funds to afford the Mercedes. Exactly. But I don't know. That's what, that's what the conclusion I came to because I grew up with you in private school, and that was the conclusion I came to at a young age. I was like, "Yep," and I I still stay true to this. It's that I don't. It's not that I don't trust that there's a higher power. It's that I don't trust people, and I don't think I think people from early point in human history understood that there was like this this part of every single person that questions why are we here. What is the purpose of all this? And these existential questions are going to inevitably arise. And these these questions are going to... Some people are seeking comfort with these questions. So it's not that I don't trust that there's a higher power. It's that I don't trust people. And people are going to be able to manipulate other people 
because they want comfort. And if you can provide comfort, then you're providing value. And then if you're providing value, you can provide, you can receive money in return. Exactly. Taking God away from the picture. So if you take God out of religion, religion is essentially giving people comfort, like what you just said, and giving them something to live for, something to guide their life, something to, you know, like a moral foundation, gives them moral foundation, gives them like certain laws to abide by. And it's just a, you know, a way, it's a way for people to cope with life. That's taking God away from it. And, you know, like it's, um, like what you said earlier too, that is, it's man that corrupts religion, not necessarily God. It's I believe in God, but I kind of just believe that God just sits back and watches the show and doesn't really intervene too much in daily affairs. I can see that. I can see that. I agree. It's it's man fucking everything up. Yeah, that's what we do. We fuck things up and then we make it better again. But then we fuck it up again, and then we once again make it better. It's it's a beautiful thing whenever people do receive a lot of value from religion or or whatever, whatever it may be. Like I know I've received a lot of value from like a myriad of religions and then a lot of secular views on religion as well. Yep. Or not, I mean secular would imply that it's not religious. Like just like secular views of philosophy or whatever ideologies, whatever it may be. And I don't know, I get a lot of value from that. And it's cool that people are receiving value, but I think people get annoyed whenever Whenever you look at it from like a dogmatic point of view, and it's like, yo, this pushy. is the way it is. You need to conform to the way that I I was saved. I was saved, therefore everybody needs to be saved. Yeah, that's real ideal. That's what annoys me. Yeah, because you're saying my way is the best way, so you have to, you have to, you know, take up this way because there's no other way. It's only my way. Like people aren't willing to admit that they're wrong in their beliefs, even though. Really, we're probably all wrong in our beliefs. None of us really know what's actually going on outside of this earth. It's a big, it's a big ass mystery. None of us know. And if anybody says they know, like definitively, they're like, "This is the way it is." Everybody else is wrong. They're fucking lying. Yep. They're That's lying to themselves. To most importantly. Exactly. You have to find your own way. Do your own thing. Don't let anybody tell you what to do. Just, you know, to a point, of course. But still, just do your own thing. There's a lot of truth in all religion, I feel. Well, I think deciphering what the true religion is, you have to break apart all... Do you want to pull that up a little bit closer? Yes. Sorry. I don't right, know cool. if my... And you can, you can move it, too. Bit. Like, it, like, works on, like, a fulcrum. Okay. So if you want to adjust it, like, if you want to chill back, you're more yeah, welcome to. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and, like, uh, chill back a little bit. There you go. There you go. That's much better. There you go. Um. So, yeah. Um... Yeah, if you trace back a whole bunch of religions, like, I bet you anything, you could find similarities between different religions if you trace them back far enough. And I think that's pretty much how you're going to find the true religion, is just looking at all religions, studying them, and seeing, you know, finding what the similarities are, and then analyzing those similarities. I agree, I agree. And maybe even, like, the nuanced differences amongst, like, different religions. It's like, yo, this one does the... I like how this, this... I mean, you could even do this with culture as well, but... I like how this religion does this this particular way. Like this one maybe puts a lot of emphasis on like meditation versus like Christianity to my understanding puts like zero emphasis on that whatsoever. Mm-hmm. So you're like, oh, that's really cool how they do that over there. But here we don't do that at all. Yeah. It's a good point. It's a very good point. Yeah. Religion is a weird beast. It is weird. And it's funny how much like people have profited off of it. Well, yeah, you're going to have people because it's so easy to prey on people, to prey on weak people. Because there's a lot of weak people out there looking for anything for guidance. So, you know, if somebody says, hey, I'm going to make your life better, follow my words, follow my teachings, and I'll guide you through this fucked up life. Most people are going to be willing to give that person their money. And, you know, some of those people are trying to do good. They are trying to, you know, help out other people. But there's definitely a lot of corrupt people out there who are just, you know, giving the money just like. Perfect example, I don't want to offend anybody who follows this group, but Scientology. That's essentially Scientology, is like going out and grabbing other people's money. L. Ron Hubbard. L. Ron Hubbard, my boy. (laughs) My boy. That's my boy. (laughs) It's our boy. That's funny. (laughs) Who, by the way, it's kind of weird because he's a a, um, sci-fi writer, and a sci-fi writer who created his own religion, and some people think that religion is weird, even though... You know, it's a sci-fi writer who created that religion. Come on. 
He's a sci-fi writer. Like, yeah. don't you ever think of that, Tom Cruise? Don't yeah. you ever think of that? Well, either Tom Cruise is incredibly stupid, or he's also on the ske- in on the scheme, which he's yeah, in, which I think the latter part because I don't think he's stupid. I think he's in on the scheme, but I'm just speculating. I don't know that for sure. Who knows? That's crazy. That's crazy. Oh, and John Travolta. I'm pretty sure he's one of those Scientology people too. Oh no shit. I've never heard that before. Pretty sure John Travolta as well. Really? I think so. Corey's shaking his head over there. I guess yeah, John Travolta is, is too. No okay. shit. I never knew our that. Fact, our fact checker, Corey, says that's true, so it must be true. <laughs> With the head nod. <laughs> yep. I've never heard that. I know Leah Remy, Re- Remini or something. Yeah, I've heard that from name before. King of Queens? Yeah. Okay, yeah. She's, she's the cute, also... The cute redhead? Possibly. Who's married to Kevin James in that show? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, absolutely. I like her. Yeah. She I, I always found her really attractive. I used to watch that with my parents. Her. Like my parents would they, honestly my mom would go to bed, I'd pop some boners and I'd like under <laughs> under the under the uh the blanket and I'd be like, Wow, this this girl's a babe. Middle school baby. <laughs> oh wow. We we would get so easily excited in middle school, everything. even just fucking, you know, seeing girls on the commercial in bikinis. Oh, what's happening down there? Same, same. I remember hearing stories about like older people in high school and like how they're having sex, and because I feel like guys kind of hit that. I mean, I feel like, like girl people always say that girls mature a lot quicker than guys do. Yeah, I've heard that, but and I, I to an extent, I kind of agree with that. Yeah. Because I don't like know, physically I, at least, like they mature physically faster than boys. I'm pretty sure. I feel like mentally too. I yeah, feel like there's I a think certain mentally too. At least I, it's hard for me to say, like in my 20s, but I I, I feel like it, I mean, based on like what I know in my 20s, is that excuse me, I get along with girls probably three, four years younger than me, like probably just as well as I get along with my guy friends that are the same age. And huh. they're they're like um, I don't know they they are more mature in a lot of ways, but they're also less mature in a lot of ways too. Yeah. So it's hard to say. It's hard to say because like I don't know the girls that are I I don't know why, but I tend to seek out girls that are like probably like I, the girls I like for whatever reason have been the same age that I was a fr- like the same age I was a senior when they were a freshman. Uh huh. If that makes sense. Yeah. And they're really mature in a lot of ways that, like, fresh – that guys their age aren't. But they're also really immature in a lot of ways that I'm not anymore. Well, because girls of – pretty much any girls in their 20s, even the late 20s, they s- tend to still like to stir up drama. And that's not all girls, of course, but, a, you know, a good number of girls like to do that even in their 20s, you know, as, which is a high school thing, stirring up drama and, you know, doing that kind of thing. But I don't know. I think the, that's one of the one of the things that girls are probably less mature about is just you know they're they kind of like drama. Guys don't necessarily like drama. We just kind of like hey, we like it nice, easy going. But some girls like drama because it's exciting, brings excitement to the life. Brings it's like chaos. I guess. It's like an yeah. addicting chaos. Yeah, it's like they're enjoying the chaos of other people. But I mean, mm. that happens that much. I guess I don't know. Yeah, I don't get that. Because a lot of women are, like, conflict-averse. Like, they want to avoid conflict at all costs. Yeah, some are. But I guess some run towards it. Because drama is definitely a form of conflict. But it's, like, a very indirect form of conflict. Yeah, it's, like, you know, like, non-violent conflict. You know, like, conflict. Like, you know, let's say two friends are fighting. Um, Two, you know, like, a group of guys are less likely to talk about it. And then, like, you know, a group of girls, two of their friends are fighting. The other group of girls are probably more inclined to talk about it and gossip about it and speculate. Like, oh, why are they fighting? And, you know, guys kind of just like, oh, they're fighting, whatever. I don't really care. Like, between, you're saying between the two dudes? Yeah. Like, oh, okay. like you know, like, guys quite, guys don't really care that much about what's going on. Like, when it comes to, like, stuff like that. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with that one. But I feel like guys are able to, like, solve conflict in a really unique way. That even I don't understand, but I'm capable of it. Yeah, like, hey, man, let's just drink a couple beers, smoke a couple joints, we're good to go. Yes, like, I mean, you get in a fight with somebody, like, like verbal or physical, yeah. and, like, you can be cool with them within 24 hours. Oh, yeah, just share a couple beers, and you're good to go. You're friends again. Absolutely. 
Like my my old roommate, same deal. Like I I got in a fight with him, physical fight, like physical altercation. Did you win? And I I don't know. I don't know what I would say. I would say it was pretty neutral because okay. he punched me in the face once, and I was like, no hitting. And okay, so he punched you first. Uh, or did so you punch him first? He. Okay, I'll say this. I, I I'll tell the whole story. I don't mind. Uh, long story short, I'm living in my old house, and I am I get him laid this weekend. So they're like on a Friday night. So you got him laid. Yes. So on he's a Friday. in your debt as of now. He's in your debt because you got him laid. I don't see it that way, but I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. I see what you're saying. <laughs> I, I, I've never thought about it that way. But I, I, it was more of like a favor for him. Okay. It thought nothing of it. I thought okay. nothing of it. Like I, it, Long story short, I had two girls down from St. Louis. One of them was looking Ooh, for St. a Louis dude. St. Louis nice girls. Yes. She was, she was looking for a dude. Oh, so yeah. I, and she was stri- she was swayed towards one of my other friends, but I swayed her back to another one of my friends because he was my roommate at the time. Uh, I'm persuasive when I need to be. I'll say that. And <laughs> I got her to do what I what was optimal for my situation. So what I did is I hooked her up with my roommate. We had a great Friday night. Fast forward to the next uh, the next day, I had a job interview, and before my job interview, we're all sitting around talking. And he starts to just make these little disparaging, belittling Directed remarks. Directed towards you? Yes. And, like, very subtle. But, like, they were getting annoying and they were starting to become non-trivial at some point in time. And it was really it was really annoying to me. Like, at, at some – I don't know. It got it got to be, like, well, yeah, annoying. If persistent enough, that's really going like, to piss you off. Yes. And, like, it, one of them, for example, like, uh, there was, like, a heater in my room and I was unable to figure out how to turn it on. And he was like, well, I guess Jordan's really smart when it comes to, like – I think he said like communicating or something. Something. I I think he's smart whenever it comes to like socially or I, I don't know what he said. Some I think he's remark. I think he's smart with this, but he's he's really dumb clearly when it comes to social or oh, what was it? Um, common sense. He's like it's he's dumb when it comes to common sense, and I was just like okay, but I I didn't want to say anything like to his face because I didn't want to cause any conflict in front of the girls. Not yeah. that I was scared of the conflict. I was more than willing to tell him, but I didn't want to embarrass him or be yeah, a little Yeah, it wasn't him. worth the time. So didn't think much of it. I go to my job interview. I come back. He continues on with these little, like, belittling remarks. I was waiting. No big deal. No big deal. I, I knew he was going to be in my life. He was going to be my roommate tomorrow. So I'm like, you know what? If he has these insecurities, if he has these feelings towards me, no worries. I'm just going to wait. 24 hours pass and I will just confront him on these issues once these girls are gone they're out of here and yeah. like we can con- continue into the future as better people yeah so with that being said I uh he continues on he continues on we start drinking a little bit more start drinking a little bit more we go to this party and I get pretty drunk at this party we all ride to this party together and I end up leaving him and these three, these two other girls, like the two girls I invited down. I left him with him because I was like, I'm, I'm annoyed. Like I'm annoyed with him at this point. Yeah. If he wants to be insecure and like, I don't know, like these girls can't see through it and they want to still feel this way. I, I, I don't know. I, if they want to, if they still want to feel this way, then so be it. But I, I can't control what he's gonna say, and I'll just talk to him about it tomorrow. Long story short, I ended up getting pretty drunk at this party. We go back home. He's still making these petty little remarks. I'm getting annoyed, but I'm – and I, be, I get to the point where I'm ignoring him. And then he goes and he buys a pizza, and he says everybody in the room can have it except for Jordan. Like, specifically calls me out. Then I was like – I was pissed about that. I wasn't even super hungry. I was hungry enough to eat, but I was, like, annoyed at the point where I was like, yo, the you're, you're like, going to give me up. a piece of pizza. And he's like, no, I'm not. I'm going to give everybody a piece of pizza except for you. And I was like – Mm, no, you're gonna give me a piece of pizza, and he's like, "No, I'm not giving you a piece of pizza." And then, long story short, I like walk up, I smack the piece of pizza. Or it was my left hand. I smack the pizza, pizza, like an undercut almost out of his lap. Good or, shit. No, it was the whole pizza box. Smack <laughs> it out of his lap, and then I smack him over the head. <laughs> and he was this guy's like a lot stronger than me, like a lot oh, stronger no than shit. me. He's a he's a really he's he's in great shape. He's okay. in great shape. Uh, I'm probably better than him, like endurance wise, uh-huh. uh, and like sprint speed and all that. But like he's he's stronger. Like as far as strength goes, he's strong. He's a really strong guy. 
Uh, and I have a lot of respect for this guy, too. This is, like, a good friend of mine. Um, I don't want to talk about him like I dislike him. Like, I, I mean, he can literally hear everything I'm saying right now. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I still have a lot of respect and love for him. But with that being said, he he uh, I smack I smack the pizza with my left hand, kind of like an uppercut, goes all over the floor, and I smack him in the head, and then he tackles me, and then I don't even I kind of like I wouldn't I, I dare I say blacked out at this point, like as far as like memory recall goes, like I don't necessarily remember what happened, but I had him like in my like guard, which is like kind of like a jujitsu thing, and I was kind of just holding him against me, and then he at one point was trying to choke me, and I was like. He's like, tap out, tap out. And I was like, I'm not tapping out because you're not actually choking me. You think you're choking me, but you're just making it extremely dis- like uncomfortable for my jaw. But it's not actually <laughs> like it's not actually like choking me out or uh, or He's making me incapable. It's not making me incapable of breathing. Yeah. So I continue on and I'm he's like telling me to tap out. I'm like, dude, you didn't win, so like I'm not gonna tap. And then it becomes a fun thing where I'm like seeing if I can tap him out or if I can choke him out or anything. <laughs> and then it, I don't know it. And then um, we continue because he always had this like pompous uh, idea of like, hey, like I think strength can overcome jujitsu. And then I was like, not that I'm experienced whatsoever, but I was like, <laughs> you're wrong. But I wanted to see if my limited ability of jujitsu could like still tap him out. So I was I was testing that theory. And, and I would say it was a draw at that point. I don't, I didn't get any good hits on him, and you could say he got good hits on me. So okay, but then he like punched me once, and I was like, no hitting. And then I like whispered in his ear one time, I'm like, I love you. <laughs> and he's like, he's super mad still. <laughs> but I don't know. That that's pretty much the story in full. But I don't uh, even know what drew that story to come up. But that's the story. No, I forgot. I completely forgot what we were talking about before that. Same. Same. But yeah, you know that's a that's a bro fight. You fight and then you hug it out. Yeah, uh, that's exactly what it was. And within twenty four hours, completely cool. Yeah, and then you're just talking like nothing ever happened. Because I I brought up I was like to be honest, man, like I gonna be very crystal clear with you right now. This is why I was upset because like you, whenever we whenever females enter the room, you get really insecure and you start belittling me for whatever reason. And I think it's something within yourself that you need to work on. And I told him that. And he's like, you're right. He's like, I'm insecure whenever girls come around because of my ex. And I was like, and we, we had a really good conversation out of it. And we grew as people. You see. Um, and it was it was it was really productive and and uh, nice. proactive for both of us. Nice. A good story. It's not my proudest moment because I'm not somebody to fight my friends like literally ever. But I think that's the only fight I've ever been in. Oh, really? Yeah. I've only been in, like, two fights in my life. Oh, really? One of them probably not even call a fight. What what was that? Oh, my first fight was... I was was probably in seventh grade, if I had to guess. I don't know if I told you this or not, but I remember uh, me and my cousin, we were at the um, RecPlex, which is, you know, like a recreation, recreational facility. Has a basketball court, swimming pool, workout station. And anyways... We were swimming, and uh, we always clown people when we go there. When we, were, when we were kids, we used to clown people, like make funny faces, say funny remarks just to get a rise out of people. And this one kid didn't like it too much. And he was like, dude, I could beat your ass. And uh, me being some stupid seventh grader, I was like, bro, try it. I bet you can't, except in a really squeaky seventh grade voice. And, yeah, we started fighting anyways. It was more of a slapping fight. And... <laughs> Pretty much, I just slapped the shit out of him until he kind of just gave up. <laughs> how my, how old is this guy? Uh, he I don't know. He was similar age to me, sixth, seventh, eighth grade, middle school age. <laughs> Some little scrawny kid, and I was like, oh, I've never been in a fight before, so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and instigate this a little bit further just to say I could get into a fight. <laughs> and then the second time wasn't even that much of a fight. Me and this one kid I went to school with in high school, we were at uh this one dude's house, and we started... Well, what happened was, so it's another thing of me instigating some stuff, so I went up to him. <laughs> and had, we had this little thing in high school where you go up, you sack tap somebody, which if you don't know what sack tapping is, it's when you just take your hand and you real quick just kind of slap somebody's nuts. It causes them some pain. 
So I did that to him. You're a motherfucker for that, by the way. Yeah, I know. We, you, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you've done it before when you're in middle school, high school. That was honestly that was a game I just never got into. Oh, I but, I didn't like when it happened to me. Put, I didn't like doing it. Plenty of guys would go around sack tapping each other. It was causing popular. Each other pain. It was it popular. Was. Anyways, I went to him. I sack tapped him. Gave him a teddy twister. <laughs> and then, you know, he's gu- first guarding his nuts after I sacked him. And then he's guarding his nipples after I gave him a teddy twister. And then I backhanded him. Not hard, of course, but just <laughs> nice little backhand. <laughs> he gets mad, punches me in the eye. It's a little shoe shiner. It's not much. Anyways, we start just wrestling a little bit. And then my buddies quickly jump in and separate us. The wrestling match was only like seven seconds long, if that. So, really, he got one good punch in, and then we wrestled. So, I don't even know if I would consider that a fight. Still, it was kind of funny. I like it. I like it. <laughs> it's so funny. That's a good story. The story. It's it's hilarious, though. It's hilarious how males can just, like, handle conflict in a very, like, aggressive way. And then that, for whatever reason, like, because that's such an extreme compared to females. Uh-huh. Females don't hit those extremes of like literally fighting it out and duking it out. It's usually no, it's just like very rare defamation of reputation. Like they're just like, hey, you slut, um, you yeah, slut. Just like they're they're very manipulative in the sense that they're like going around. Okay, who does this other female that I'm competing with at this particular moment in time? What is she? What qualities does she have that I can like uh, attack? And who's personal to her that I can tell that to? And then. They go around, they're just on. They're just lurking, and then they eventually find that person that they can. Hey, did you know she's actually a super big whore? Oh no, is she really? <laughs> and then they tear her apart like that. Yeah, just soil her reputation. And that's usually like good friends of their old friends. I I don't get it. That's like a really. That's almost a more fucked up way. And then guys like they they fight it out, and then it's like. I don't know, especially, like, if there's, like, a clear winner, it's like, okay, like, respect, you beat my yeah, ass. Like, like, okay, I respect like, I get your it. ass now. I, You know, I was bad-mouthing you. You beat my ass. I respect you. I won't bad-mouth you again. Yeah. And that's that's just it. You probably won't fight him again. Because that's, like, the most extreme. And there's, like, a, it's, like, a very clear determination of outcome. Yeah. It's, like, yo, like, there, like, after a fight, it's, like, there is one – clear winner or the or it's like an or i mean it's either one clear winner or it's neutral yeah and especially if the clear winner has like mercy it's just like okay you could have beat me up a lot worse than you did like respect respect then then uh unless there's just a pure no respect but i'm talking like i'm mainly talking amongst friends yeah because you know um, groups of friends will fight each other every now and then but it's usually nothing usually just shrug it off afterwards so so weird. Such a weird way to handle conflict and how it varies amongst genders. Yeah. I, I feel think like the it's male always way. been like that, though. Yeah, right? I think the male way makes more sense to me. I think so, too. But, like, at first, it's so counterintuitive to say that it's like, yo, this makes more sense. Like, just, it, I don't know, it's a weird thought to say that this, that, uh, that makes more sense. To, like, fight it out and duke it out. It's like, no way that's the best way to handle conflict. But it, I think it's better than the women way, the yeah. female way. Yeah, because, you know, you take pain, take, you know, 10 minutes of pain, you guys roughing each other up, and that's really it. However, when you're soiling somebody's reputation, that's going to stick with them for a while, months, maybe even years. Like, psychologically, if you're doing this back in middle school, and you always hear those stories of people, yeah, I was bullied back in middle school, so then I, I had to become a new person when i came to high school or yeah, yeah i was bullied in high school or yeah like psychological wasn't super popular. effects can that can affect you a lot more like psychologically than that's like a lot more things. twisted yeah that's a lot more twisted that shit will stay with you because you, if you, somebody fucks with you in middle school and fucks your mind up like you're probably gonna be off a little bit off for the rest of your life a little bit distrustful of people but you know like if you duke it out with somebody it's just gonna be you know, maybe a few days of soreness, and then that's pretty much it. There's no psychological damage from that. Absolutely. Yeah, it's funny to me, like, too, like how uh, some girls are very like self righteous, like very conceited in the aspect. They're like, I don't know, like, like I. What it bothers me is like not rejection, but whenever a girl just doesn't reply, it's like 
Yes. What's wrong with you? Or also gives, like, doesn't give you a clear answer. Kind of just like, when you like, okay, so when you ask some, you know, a girl out, and she doesn't give you a clear answer, and she keeps like, oh, maybe next week we'll hang out. And that's always the same bullshit, like, no, just be straight up with me. You don't want to hang out with me. Yeah, I don't absolutely. like beating around the bush or anything. I agree. Because they, they li- I feel like they, like, kind of strain you along to get that attention, yeah. maybe. I don't get it. Yeah, because I'll respect a girl a lot more if she says straight to my face, no, I'm not interested in you. I don't want to go out with you at all. Just tell me that, and I'll be like, all right, I respect you for being straight up with me. And being Absolutely. Truthful. It's the beauty of today's era, because I, I feel like you can – kind of counteract that that uh response to like giving females attention by just upping the frequency yeah by upping the volume and it's the beauty of tinder baby tinder yep like i mean that's that's really (laughs) honestly is a great strategy if you're trying to like i need to try it though i need to try it i would consider it i'll say that i don't know what your goals are every guy's different if you're looking for love you're looking for High Not number of hookups. Looking for love, but if I just so happen to find love, I'll go with it. I guess if that makes any sense. I think that's a great mentality to have. Yeah, yeah. Because like, like if you're like anti love at this age, especially, it's like, I don't know. A lot oh, of people, that being a lot said, of people still, get that way. Yeah, but still, if you don't want to, don't marry young. Just live your life. Live your twenties. Get married in your thirties and just have fun in your twenties. That's how I feel. That's a hundred percent how I feel. That's currently how I'm living my life. I don't expect to get married until I turn, you know, twenty eight, twenty nine, or thirty. But I'm down to the idea if I meet the certain somebody. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? So let me ask you this: Do you believe in fate? Like everybody has a predetermined soulmate, or do you just believe we just find people? I think soulmates are a stupid concept. Yeah. The concept of, like, there's one person out there made for you. Yeah, I don't believe that either. I kind of just believe we're just a whole bunch of people. Yeah. On a fucking rock, trying to find our way. Yeah, yeah. I think you're capable of loving a lot of people. Like, if you, if you like, whatever love means to you, I feel like you're fully capable of loving a ton of different people. Yeah. Yeah. The women, they need my love. I need to spread my love. Exactly. They all need it. It's they, selfish of me just to say, oh, only these girls get my love. <laughs> I mean, all the women in this world I have a right to my love. They need Brendan's love. They do. They need they do. Brendan's love. <laughs> 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 I like that. i that's funny. That's funny. No, I agree though, I agree. It's um I don't know, just the the idea of like there's one person out there made for you. Yeah, I don't, I don't buy into what that. What do you think of it? I don't buy into that. I don't know. Because I don't believe in fate either. I kind of just believe our, you know, we kind of, we determine our future by the actions we make in our life. And that determines our future. I don't think our futures are predetermined. So it's a, it's a very, like, idealistic point of view. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. A part of me always wants to be, I don't know. There's we a, all want to be in control. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We all like to think we're in control. Which is the weird thing about, like, thinking there's this person out there just destined for you to be with. It somehow makes you feel more in control in a really bizarre way. Yeah. That doesn't make sense, but it does. Like, you wouldn't think that that's the response, that it's going to make you feel a lot more in control and secure, but it does make you feel that way. Yeah, it kind of does. I don't understand that. I don't either. It's life, though. Life is one big mystery. One big mystery. Yeah. I don't know. I think you can be attracted. I I know for a fact I'm attracted to a ton of different people. I'm attracted to a ton of girls, and I don't even necessarily know what attraction itself is, but... If I'm if I can be attracted to a lot of people, then can I be can I love a lot of people? And my conclusion is yes. Like that's kind of dumb to think that I can only only love one person amongst six billion people. Yeah, yeah. Like talking about like in love, right? 
Okay. Yeah, like real well, love. It's kind of like okay, so do you know when you have a relationship and you tell, it's not a real, it's not like a serious relationship either, but it's still like, you know, you say, oh, when you're saying goodbye to your girlfriend, oh, I love you, and she says, oh, I love you too. I feel like you know we don't really mean that. Like I know I've said that before. Like oh, baby, I love you too. I'll see you later. But do I love you? I don't know. I don't know. Mm. Probably not. Probably just us saying it, just to get by. Yeah, right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think anybody really understands what love is. No. Just a chemical. Some kind of chemical balance in your brain that says, oh, this person, I like how this person looks. I like how this person is. I don't know. Or more, more. maybe it's more than just chemicals in our body. Maybe it's something that's actually like spiritual. Like transcendental. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a weird thought. Interesting. A lot of people that. say that it's a high level of like dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin. And that's all but, it is. And but yeah, why don't you else. just get that from like normal relationships? True. And also, I feel like love, like, I feel like you can love your friends in a different way than you can love. Like, yeah. Oh, there's yeah. There's some friends you like. you love your family, like, you know, your sisters or your mom and dad. You love them in a different way than you would love your wife, for, for example. Absolutely. It's like a different type of love. And even you, love. like, I mean, I love you. Like, I love you. I've known you forever. Bro. I, love I love you, bro. You, bro. I feel the love. We've known each other for a good minute now. Exactly. It's been well over a decade. But, like, I'm not going to love you. Like, if I were to get a girlfriend tomorrow, then I wouldn't, I wouldn't love them the same way that I love you. Exactly. And I shouldn't. Yeah. yeah, it's more of a, well, because when you love your friends, it's kind of, it's, it's almost like a brotherly love. Mm-hmm. Like, because you're almost part of, like, you're like, oh, bro, you're part of my family. You know, blood-wise, no, but still, you're part of my family. It's like a brotherly love kind of thing. You know, your bros, your bros are really your family, too. And really, that's the people who you choose to be in your family. Because your family, your actual real family, you're just, you're just kind of born with them. Yeah. You may love them or you might not. A lot of people in my family, especially from my dad's side, pieces of shit. Oh yeah, we all have pieces of shit in our family. Yeah, everybody has has that has that part of the family that they're like, eh, yeah, yeah, I'd I'm rather not. not. Oh, I'm gonna stay away from them. Yeah, right. Like, I, whenever I go to a family reunion, that's the person I don't want to talk to. Absolutely. That one uncle. Eh, eh. Oh, I'm gonna avoid him. Pretty much exactly how I feel. Yeah. Cool, we can wrap this up if you want. How, we've gone like 40 minutes almost. 40 minutes? Yeah. Shit, yeah, we can go ahead and wrap it up. Cool. All right, folks, that's a wrap. That's a wrap. It's been great talking to you all. I hope you uh, hope you all enjoyed the show. I'm taking this off. This is so hot. I'm sweaty, man. This is like the sweatiest I've ever been on a podcast. Yeah, I'm perspiring quite a bit, too. Is it just hot in this basement? I'm taking my shirt off for the end of this. Yeah, just take it off, man. <laughs> I'm just take kidding. it off. Uh, look ridiculous even more now. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, that's everything I have to talk about. Yeah, me too. Should we? Do you? How much beer do you have left in there? Oh, I have a pretty good. I have about half can left. Do you want to chug the rest on this podcast? Hey, pull that up I've closer. I already started. <laughs> yes. Ugh. Oh my goodness. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, done. <laughs> this is ridiculous. I love this. All right, we're calling it quits. Podcast. That was a great podcast, great baby. Podcast. <laughs>